Hi, it's Mary Ellen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first reading journal setup video. I am really nervous about this, you guys, because this is the first reading journal I've ever had and I haven't made that many bullet journal spreads in my life, so this was scary for me. I was going to use a Happy Planner bullet journal, but I decided instead to use this Archer and Olive journal that came in one of the subscription boxes last year. It looks just like a book. I think it's perfect for this theme. So let's start with my name page and just chat a little bit. First of all, can we talk about how I am attempting to be this aesthetic girly with my little plant and candle? I gotta tell you guys, if you're new to my channel, this is not me, but I just wanted it to be cozy and nice for a reading journal video. Books have always been a big part of my life, and last year I made a reading tracker for my planner and I really enjoyed it and I found that I read more last year than I have pretty much any other year since I was a child. So it really made a difference and I decided I am going to bite the bullet and make a whole reading journal. And let me tell you, this took so much time, but it was worth it. So I watched a whole lot of reading journal setup videos on YouTube. There are some great ones out there. I will say that this reading journal is not going to be as aesthetically beautiful as the ones that I see online. I did my best, but it's definitely different than what you're probably used to seeing. My intention when I started was to have a lot of black elements in here combined with pastels. But as I went on, I realized I needed a little more than that, so I decided that 2024 would be florals. Instead of drawing everything, I decided to use stickers. I'm taking stickers from a Happy Planner Mega sticker book, Garden Flowers. And honestly, I wanted to have sort of the same color theme throughout, but it turns out in the end that it really shifts as you go from page to page, which I don't really love and that's something I've learned that I want a more consistent theme throughout the journal. In fact, I've learned a lot of lessons through this process and next year I think will go much more smoothly. So the first page I'm working on here is my bookshelf. I've seen a lot of people set up these cute little bookshelves and I wanted to make my own. There's another part to it on the next page. This is just the first section. I read 54 books last year, so I set a goal this year of 75 books. Each one of the doodle books represents my book that I'm going to read in real life. I'm going to color each one in as I read it and I'll talk about that in a minute. I was going to color in this bookshelf brown or leave it white but as I was drawing it I kind of messed up and made things overlap that shouldn't have overlapped so I ended up coloring it all in black which I don't really love but you know it was okay. I could have used a ruler to make sure that the lines were perfectly straight, but honestly, I wanted a doodle look, and then I regretted that because the lines are definitely not as straight as I'd like. Now it's time to draw the books, and that was my favorite part. I had a lot of fun sketching this out. I literally did it while I was watching TV, and tracing it is so much easier than doing, you know, the first part. This is also the page where I wrote out my reading goals for the year. So like I said before, I'd like to read 75 books. I'd also like to read some new genres. I have pretty much stuck to romance and thriller for a very, very long time and with some like regular fiction thrown in there. But I would really like to branch out a little bit, maybe read some historical fiction, read, uh, I don't know, sci-fi, fantasy, just try different things. Maybe I will surprise myself. And Another goal I have is to be consistent with this journal because I tend to set things up sometimes and then neglect them, so I'm going to really try. And I'd like to join a book club. I have to find one in my area. I could start one, but honestly, I would rather meet some new people and just join a, a pre-existing club, so that's on my list for January. My aesthetic has left the building. Honestly, I don't know how people can stand to have plants and candles and things in the way when they're trying to create. So I shoved it all out of the way and let's keep going. And yeah, this is the real me, messy desk and all. I didn't need the bottom shelf, so on that shelf I made a little key for coloring in the books. I'm going to color them in according to whether they're a Kindle book, a regular book, or an audiobook. 
I still have to decide on the colors so I didn't fill that part in yet. But I decided to color in the doodles that were on the shelves. Also somehow I lost the footage where I put a flower sticker in the corner and then I wrote how did you do and I put the stripes there. I don't know where that footage went but I thought it would be nice to be able to journal underneath my goals at the end of the year. The next page is my favorite authors page. So I always love to read the same authors over and over again if I love their books and I kind of lose track of you know which books I'd like to read, how many more I have to go. I do use Goodreads but it's not really user friendly for you know keeping track of that sort of thing so I think this will be really good. I've always wanted to have a way to track them and I think this will work. So underneath each author, I'm just going to have little check boxes with all of the books that they've written. I know some people who do this just put the ones that they haven't read yet on there, but I wanted to keep track of how many I've actually read from each author. So I split it in two and I'm just going to go down the page and put a new section in. Maybe leave a little bit of room when they put out new books. So I started with Emily Henry and Taylor Jenkins Reid because they're two of my favorites. In the On the bottom, I am decorating it with the same flowers that were on the other page. And I love this look. I realize that I need more space though. So I'm going to do two blank pages after that. I ended up decorating the blank pages later and you'll see that at the end. But right now I'm making my book bingo page. I've seen a lot of creators make these bingo pages and I thought it just sounded so much fun. So I kind of scoured the internet for ideas. I only made up a couple of these ideas myself. The rest I just copied. Um, and I don't know that I will complete this sheet, but it's a fun challenge for me. And um, hopefully it will just spark my interest in reading even more. I chose different colors of flower stickers for this page and I kind of wish I hadn't because they're so different from the rest that it makes me not like this page as much, but they're still pretty on their own. I think next year I will definitely make sure that the colors are the same for every page. The next page is just an A to Z challenge and I took out X and Z because I thought they were too hard. Basically, every time I read a book that starts with that letter, I can fill it in and we'll see how many I get at the end of the year. I thought it sounded like fun. I thought I'd make the pages a little cuter by adding a couple of stripes in marker and then putting hearts over them. This next page I'm calling TBR and Anticipated Releases. So if you're new to book a language, TBR just means to be read. I have a lot of books on my Goodreads TBR. There's probably about 300 books on there. I just add to it when I see one that I want to read. The problem is there's so many on there that when I go to read one, I don't know which one to pick and there's a lot of really good ones that are toward the bottom that I never read. I've always wanted a place to keep that list of the ones I wanted to read the most and I'm going to go through my Goodreads list and sort of pick out those books and put them on this page. A lot of people have separate pages for anticipated releases from authors that they love but I decided to put it on this page as well because if it's an anticipated release, then for me, it's also going on my TBR. So I know that combining it might not make sense, but to me, it makes sense. So there's just a place for title and author. And then if it is a new release, then I will put a little note about the date. But other than that, title, author. When I was cutting the edges of the flowers off the bottom of the page, I found it so difficult to do it in a bullet journal because I can't rip the page out of the book. I had a really hard time with that. Has anybody else had that problem? I don't know. It, it was really challenging. This next page is a space where I will write my top 10 books of the year. The following page is actually a book bracket to figure out my favorite book of the year. And I do list my favorites each month, but I might really love two or more books in a month more than the following month. Does that make sense? So I decided that I was going to pick my top 10 for the whole year and this is where I will record my top 10. And I'm just gonna write them in. I'm not gonna put the book pictures in here. 
I feel like I'm really inconsistent with my book ratings on Goodreads. I keep rating them fours and fives, and I feel like I need to switch it up so that I'm rating them properly. So I'm going to put my rating system down here and describe how to rate each book just to keep me on track with that. And I'll fill this out in a minute. I have to think about it. This is the book bracket I was telling you about that will help me choose which one was my favorite book for the year. Because if you're just looking at 75 books that you've read and trying to choose, it's really difficult. So this helps narrow it down. Each block on the left and on the right represents a different month. And then I choose my favorite book for the month. And then from, let's say, January and February, I look at those two books and decide which one it do I like the best. And then I put it in the next block and so on. And hopefully it will help me figure it out. And at the end of the year, I will know which one it is. And then I'll put it at the top of the page. That will be the book of the year. I think that's a really cool idea. Of course, I didn't make this up. I saw a whole bunch of people doing this online. And after I choose my book of the year, I'm going to fill out this next page, which is obviously called book of the year. I'll put a photo of the book in there and write my thoughts on it, rate it, you know, maybe put some quotes in there from the book, that kind of thing. I don't really want to set up this page yet until I have my book of the year and I can sort of figure out how I want to, to make this page come to life. The next page is my yearly stats page. I think it's really interesting to keep statistics about your life and about the books you read. So I have total books read, total pages read, must, most read month, least read month, average rating, number of new authors I read, and number of books I did not finish. But before I write all that in, I want to decorate this page. So I grabbed some big flowers from one of the Happy Planner sticker books and put them in here. Again, it's kind of bothering me that all of these flowers are not within the same color palette, but I was running out of ideas and um, running out of stickers that matched each other. Still cute. By the way, this black pen I'm using is a Pigma Micron size one. I've used it for a lot of the pen in this journal. Also, the smaller writing, I've been using a Muji 0.38 pen, and also I've been using Tombow dual brush pens for the colored pen in this, most of it. I'll try to link everything for you in the description box. The bottom of this page is a place where I will record the number of books in each genre that I read for the year. I think that's going to be some interesting facts for me, just to see if I've gotten out of my comfort zone you know, what types of books I seem to like out of my comfort zone and all of that. So I want a place to record it. It also might encourage me to actually do, you know, read those types of books so that I have something to put in this little box. One of the most frustrating things about setting up this journal was trying to figure out how to track each book that I read. I wanted a place where I could put the pictures of the book jackets in there and do like a, a star rating. But I also was trying to figure out, do I want to write a little blurb about each book? I really did want to do that, but I know myself very well. And I also know I probably wouldn't do it. I would probably be frustrated with myself for not completing it. So I think since this is my first reading journal ever, I'm going to start simple. And that means printing out pictures of each book and just doing the star rating underneath. So then I thought, well, should I just do a whole, you know, bunch of pages of just the books? But I've seen a lot of people making reading journals where they're doing it month by month and they're writing their stats each month and stuff. So uh, I, I didn't know. I, I was really confused by this. So what I ended up deciding to do was a, a page for each month and then I set up little um, part, oh my gosh, I can't speak. I set up sections where I could put the pictures of the books and then at the bottom, a little rectangle where I could write about my favorite book of the month. That way I can still write about a book, but I'm not forced to write about every single book. I bought these star rating stickers from Amazon. The shop is called Orange Umbrella Company. And um, 
there's a lot of them and they seem to be the right size. So I'm putting them under the space for each book picture. And this is when I quickly figured out that I should have left myself more room um, between the books. So then what I did was went back on Google Docs, resized the book picture, and then March at, March and up are going to be smaller books. I hate that it's not uniform. I can't stand that January and February are going to look different from the rest of the months, but I thought it would be too frustrating otherwise. So I think this is going to be a better solution. And again, I'm going to know more for next year. The other thing I want to mention is that I know I probably will not read seven books each month. In fact, I know I'm not going to read seven books each month. But I wanted to give myself enough room so that if I had seven books in a month, I could put them in. If I happen to have more than seven books in a month, which is highly doubtful, but it could happen, I'll just figure out how to fit it in at that point. Um, I just wanted it to look aesthetically pleasing. Another thing to mention too is that I started doing each of the the little guides where I was going to put the pictures. I did them in pen and I quickly realized that I want to make sure I go behind where the picture is going to go because I don't want those pen marks to show. And then as I went on through the months, I figured out that I really just wanted to put the marks in pencil. I did not need to put them in pen so that if the marks do go outside the lines, I can just erase them. And if I have less than seven books in a month, I can erase those marks and use it um, for stickers or use it for describing more books or a big book quote or something. That way the page won't look blank at the end of the year, if that makes sense. So again, it was something I was learning as I was going along. And by the time I hit, I don't know, like the middle of the year, I did it all the right way. <laughs> for March and April, I decided not to put all of the star rating stickers in because I didn't want to waste them in case I wasn't reading those books. So it's pretty much guaranteed I'm going to read three books in a month. So I put in three for March and April. And then the rest of the year, I'm just going to wait and put them in you know, when I get to it, I'll keep the stickers in the pocket in the back of my journal just so I can access them when I need. And then in each box at the bottom of the page, I'm writing favorite book for that month. After I finished setting up the journal, I thought I would go back through it, take a look and add in any details that I might want to add in. And what I figured out on this bookshelf is that I don't want to color the whole entire book. I think it's going to look better if a lot of the book is white and then I'm just going to color in the stripe on the book or the little circle or the rectangle or whatever. So I'm going back in and putting in little details on every book, you know, because some of them were just completely plain and that way I can make sure I only color in those details. I did also choose the colors I was going to use and I put them in my little key. This took such a long time, but it's finally finished. I'm so excited that it's done and um, I'm really excited to fill it out this year. So let's take a look at everything. I have to write my name in there. So we have the title page. I'm upset that I got I think my my hand like leaned on it with some ink. So that if you have any suggestions on how to get that off, let me know. I actually tried to erase it. It didn't come off, but that's all right. So title page. Here are my 2024 reading goals and my little bookshelf and the rest of the shelf. Favorite authors. I cannot wait to fill this up because I've wanted a way to track my favorite authors and their books for such a long time. And I have a lot of them. So I hope this is going to be enough. Um, if not, I can add pages in the back or just wait until 2025 to add in more. Here's my book bingo, my A to Z challenge. Actually, I can write in the first one already. There we go. And my TBR and anticipated releases. I considered putting stripes here for the writing, but I decided against it. Then we have my top 10 and my rating system, book of the year bracket, 
and then a page for the book of the year 2024 stats. I'm disappointed with this page, but it's still fun. And then here are my monthly pages. I'm pretty bummed that I changed partway through and that they're not all the same, but live and learn. And you know, once I turn the page to March, I'll be fine. But we have all of these. I like how they look at the end. Yeah, and that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. Do you have a reading journal? Have you had success in filling it out? I hope that I stick to it. I think that I will because I put so much work into it. And next year when I do this again, it is going to be so much easier because I know what to expect and I'll be using it all year because it's hard to set up a reading journal when you've never used one and you don't exactly know what you need. But you know, through trial and error, I'll find out everything that I like and don't like about this year's journal, and then I can just change it next year. But I'm gonna have fun with it. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.